Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to the YouTube video and in today's video, we are gonna dive into five tips to instantly improve in Bloodstrike. Ever since my coaching video, people have been asking me for tips and tricks and I haven't really gotten around to it yet. So in this video, I will be explaining you guys tips and tricks that I apply when I'm playing Bloodstrike and I do genuinely believe that this is gonna help you improve in the game in a very short period of time. So without further ado, let's hop into the video and I hope you enjoy. The first tip is to figure out which playstyle matches you. Are you someone that likes to push in and take on duos, or are you more of a relaxed player that supports their team? Or maybe you like being that annoying sniper player on top of prison. Believe it or not, there are different playstyles in Bloodstrike, and depending on how you like to play, you will want to choose a specific striker and loadout. And trust me, no matter the playstyle, you can always frag out, so let's see what we have. If you're a person who likes to play aggressive and push players, you will need to play a striker that can easily take advantage with their abilities. Let's call these dualist strikers like Zero, Ethan, Kraken, and Volt. Next up, we have strikers that provide support to their team. We have Emma, EMT, Ran, and Val. And last but not least, we have strikers that have a lot of utility. These are the strikers that can have a bit more of a laid-back playstyle with snipers, and with your abilities, you can finish off or zone people away. These strikers are Nova, Nacho, Blast, Jet, and Hen. And then we also have Spike. My dude is literally just living in an alternate universe. No one actually plays him. We don't know what he is doing in Bloodstrike, guys. So for a duelist, I would highly recommend playing with an AR plus SMG or shotgun loadout. And for the other strikers, it really just depends on what you feel like playing. You can go for an AR SMG or shoddy loadout, but you can also go for a sniper SMG loadout. Sniper plus shotgun combo is also possible, but that's a little bit more hardcore and you need to be experienced to pull this off successfully. In conclusion, try to find your main playstyle and striker to play with and get yourself really really comfortable, get yourself some good loadouts for your favorite weapons, and once you feel like you've improved enough, you can move on to other playstyles and strikers. Take it step by step. Because you know what they say, Rome was not built in one day. In the second tip, we will briefly talk about aim and movement. I will not be able to cover all of it because these two topics could be put into separate videos. But good aim and good movement starts with good gear. And for that, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Razer. Whether you are a mobile gamer or PC gamer, Razer has got you covered. They've got thumb sleeves, handheld controllers for phones, coolers for your phone or iPad, and so much more. And also, they have Razer Gold, which you can actually use to top up gold in Bloodstrike. Very, very nice. Razer was kind enough to send me their latest keyboard, the Huntsman V3 Pro. And let me tell you guys, this is unlike any keyboard I have ever tried, no cap. The new Razer Huntsman V3 is literally one of the fastest keyboards in the world with the rapid trigger mode and snap tap mode. So let's have a quick breakdown of what that actually means. With Rapid Trigger, instead of having a fixed reset point like your classical mechanical keyboards, your key will literally reset instantly. This allows for faster repeated keystrokes compared to standard keyboards, which actually enhances in-game responsiveness. And with the new Snap Tab mode, the keyboard will prioritize the latest input between two selected keys without having to release the previous one. So you can enjoy more responsive inputs for almost instant directional changes. Your movement in Bloodstrike, but also in other games, will feel ultra snappy and fast with this keyboard. The key touches feel very, very smooth and sensitive, giving you absolute control over what you want to do exactly. Thank you again, Razer, for sending this to me. Let's leave some W's in the comments down below for Razer. As always, we are going to put this baby to the test, and while we are doing so, I am going to be giving you guys some movement tips. All right, we're going to go over a quick movement technique that I apply when I'm playing Bloodstrike. So most people, when they actually are moving around, they just run, sprint, slide. What I do most of the time, especially when I'm getting shot at, is I run, slide, slide, cancel, jump, and strafe me there. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Now, if you do this correctly, this is going to be super, super hard for the enemy to hit you because adjusting your aim vertically is a very, very easy thing to do. But adjusting your aim horizontally is something completely, completely different and it is very hard to predict movement like that. So it basically makes you very, very hard to hit and very slippery. So if you are running away or if you need to strafe, this is the way to do it. So let's start with the basics and see what most people do wrong and how you can prevent it. A good player can have good aim and move around by sliding, 
But what sets a good player apart from an excellent player is the combination of both. Most people will move, stand still, and try to empty their magazine and then move again. But the real magic is when you move and shoot at the same time by sliding. In order to do this, you need momentum on your side, and if you do it right, most enemies will be caught off guard, resulting in you putting down a lot of damage without taking much damage in return. As someone who likes to play aggressively, this is a technique that I use a lot when I know where my enemy is hiding. I will literally just slide and swing on them while I'm emptying my SMG magazine, or if you like to play with the MP155, you can shoot, slide, shoot, slide. While this technique is super, super effective, you can also definitely overdo it. The more you move, the harder your shots are to hit. And if you miss valuable shots, you might take too much damage and go down anyway. So you have to try and find a sweet spot of moving and shooting. Another thing that I very often do, and some of you guys are gonna be weirded out by this, but trust me when I say that it helps. While I'm fighting, I will move, shoot and go back to melee and then swap back to my weapon so during my fights i will swap to melee to get even more momentum and speed making it very very hard for the enemy to track me and hit their shots on me there is a few more secrets to movement and strafing but i will have to keep that for a separate video so make sure to leave a like on this guide if you want to see a movement guide moving on to the aim part no pun intended all right, aim is a whole different beast and there is a lot of tips and tricks on how to improve your aim. But first, let's talk about some basic stuff and then let's move on to some more advanced techniques. Okay, first things first, you have to stop copying your favorite YouTubers and streamers sensitivity. What works for me might not work for you. What works for Nox will most likely not work for you either. Stop being lazy and sit down in the shooting range until you find your right sensitivity. And some of you are going to ask me, Lights, how do I find my right sensitivity? Well, this is what you need to do. You have to go into the shooting range and pick up a weapon without any attachments on it. And per scope, you will try to shoot the gun and adjust your sensitivity accordingly. Try to find a sensitivity that feels nice and steady for you. Also, I highly recommend finding a good ADS steering sensitivity so you can turn very, very smoothly when you have to turn in battles. Next up, when you are shooting enemies, obviously try to hit your shots, but you have to go a step further than that because simply hitting shots sometimes is just not enough. I really want you to aim for the enemy's head and try to hit headshots. So how do I easily hit headshots, you might ask? This has to do with crosshair placement. Let's take an example from a more extreme game, but we will apply the same technique to Strike. In tactical shooter games like Valorant and CSGO, crosshair placement is everything. It will literally make a difference between making the one tap or getting one tap. This same thing does not entirely apply to Bloodstrike because this game is way more dynamic, but it does apply in certain situations like close corner combat. If you hold your crosshair or reticle, whatever you want to call it, in the right spot, you are more likely to hit headshots and not only that. You will also hit shots faster than your opponents because all you need to do is click or tap whereas your opponent still needs to aim and click or tap. This will honestly give you a huge, huge edge in most fights, and this is a tip you have to apply if you want to become the best of the best. There's a few more points to touch on about aim, but again, that will be for a different video. Let me know if you guys are interested in that. All right, we are going to move on to the third tip, positioning and communication. This is something that sounds very, very simple, but if I had a coin for every time I see someone out of position, I would be really, really rich right now. So let's split this up. We have positioning on the map, but we also have positioning in combat. When positioning on the map, it is really, really important to keep an eye on the timer for when zone shrinks and you have to move accordingly. That makes sense because otherwise you will die to the zone. But you can go more advanced with this. You can ask yourself, if I move here for the zone, what will the next zone? Is there high ground? Is there cover? Can we gatekeep people and get some easy kills? Also, when the zone shrinks, pay close attention to how the game ends because some of the endgame zones will come back in other games. I've had many games where I recognize the endgame zone pattern and I can actually move to a good spot to win the game away. Let's talk about positioning in combat or when you are moving because I know a lot of you get beamed while trying to go from point A to point B and trust me, it happens to the best of us but it can be easily avoided. First things first, don't ever shoot enemies if 
if you are not in a good position to do so. Before you engage, always make sure you have cover next to you. I will only very rarely shoot people when I myself am in the open because most of the time you will just die or it is a very risky 1v1 that you don't want to take. When you are taking on fights, make sure to use the environment to your advantage. Sometimes you have boxes, zip lines, windows, and, and even little ledges outside of buildings that you can stand on to outplay people. Alright, my final point, and I know this is not always possible, but communication is key. If you can enable your microphone to play with teammates, then please do so. If you don't have the luxury to do so, then you should learn how to use the ping system in Bloodstrike and try to stay close to teammates to help them out when needed. The next tip is going to be pretty obvious, but again, this is easier said than done. Let's talk about getting the most of your utility in game. Now, what do I mean by utility? Well, it just means getting the most out of your money, your abilities, and grenades, and maximizing your value out of them. First, let's talk about money. Once you have enough money, you should try to call a loadout drop or go to a nearby shop to buy your favorite weapon or loadout. I know this sounds very obvious, but a lot of people wait way too long before getting a custom loadout, and it makes a huge difference. Having 30 bullets in your AR versus 60 bullets is literally double the amount. Obviously, there's a lot of other things that you can do with the in-game money, but one that I catch myself not doing enough and also other people is using that money to upgrade your shields early. Trust me guys when I say this, that this can actually turn a fight around. Last point that I want to mention here is buying my teammates back. Honestly, I often don't buy my teammates back early to mid game because that money is better spent in the late game in my opinion. The only exception that I make is when two out of four teammates are dead and I'm also in danger, then I will buy one of them back. But my point is that you need to eco your money throughout the match because that money can come in really really clutch in the late game. One thing to really get good at in this game is using grenades and abilities and making the most out of them. A lot of people use their abilities too late or not at all because they forget. Before you engage on a team or enemy, you have already got to start thinking, can I throw a grenade to get an advantage? Can I use my abilities offensively? If I go in, can I safely get out or adapt with my abilities if things go sad? Oh, and if your teammate is knocked, then I need to get him back up. Can I throw a molly in the door or in the window opening to not get pushed? Maybe can I throw down a smoke grenade? I know this sounds very, very obvious, but I literally see almost no one doing any of this. So start making it a habit because you will see how much value this gives in fights, especially if you have multiple players pushing you at once. And we are now getting to the end of this video. And my final tip for you is picking the right fight and how to deal with third parties. I know some of you out there are like me. You hear gunshots and it's basically music to your ears and you want to hop into the fight as well. Or for some of you, you were minding your own business and suddenly you've got enemies pushing your area or your building. But how do you go about these fights and how can you make sure that you will be the victor of the fight even with multiple people pushing? Let's have a look. In order to know when to fight and how to make picks, you need to become more aware of your surroundings and also be more aware of what your teammates are doing. I know this can be very very hard, especially if you are new to the game, you are processing a lot of information already, but without proper game and map awareness, you're gonna lose fights and it might even cost you the game sometimes. So first, let's talk about awareness in game. Obviously, you have audio in your headset or earbuds to tell you what is going on, but there is a lot of other things that can help you understand the game and what exactly is going on. You have a footstep indicator, and trust me, this is something that you must pay attention to because it will literally tell you where the enemies are. Are they in front of you, behind you, above or under? Always make sure that if you see a footstep indicator to be ready to fight. When there are multiple footsteps and you realize that you're getting pushed by multiple people, you need to make a quick decision of what you want to do. Do you think you can make a quick pick and juke the enemies around and pick them off one by one? Or do you think it's smarter to retreat and make your way to your teammates for backup? If you decide to fight people, you also need to be aware of other enemy teams hearing these shots and you might get third partied and still die. You really need to be careful as to where to take the fights and if a fight takes too long, you need to be on high alert for another team swinging in. If you take a fight and you win, but afterwards you have nowhere to go when a third party comes in, you can still die and lose the game. And finally, always look at your minimap to see where your allies are and make good use of UAV scans to to make sure you can handle fights correctly. If you don't have money, you can always request a UAV scan from your allies as well. And also, please, please make sure to finish off your kills as soon as possible because there is no worse feeling than knocking someone down and have them backstab you again 
10 seconds later because you forgot to finish them off. Anyway, I think that's enough information to take in. I think there is so much more to learn in Bloodstrike, but there's only so much I can cover in one video. But this should put you onto the right path of improvement. And please don't hesitate to let me know if you find this video useful and if you would like to see more guides like this. I want to give a big thank you to Razor again. And of course, a big thank you and shout out to all of you watching my videos on a daily basis. Take care, guys, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.